Hey guys and welcome back to a, another vlog. If you are new here, welcome. My name's Sophie and I run the blog Sophie Suitcase. If you're an oldie and you've been here for a while, welcome back and thank you for tuning in again. This vlog is all about London. Now, over the past 18 months, I have been an avid explorer of London, trying to find some of the best free things to do in the city. Uh, whilst we've not been able to travel, uh, I thought it was a perfect excuse both to explore the UK and also explore different parts of London which I have not been able to explore in previous years just because I've been so busy and um, I've had some of the best times so I wanted to kind of come to you with this vlog with some of the best free things to do in London. So the first place you can visit in London, which is high up in very many people's lists, even if it is just to look at it from outside, is the Palace of Westminster, or many know it as Big Ben as well, which is simply actually the bell inside the tower. Um, but it is where kind of the UK government meet and they get together and they discuss everything from which laws should be in place to which policies should exist. Uh, to things that aren't going quite right in the country and it is somewhere that even though you cannot go inside um, you can admire the stunning architecture both from just outside the Palace of Westminster but also from the other side of the river as well for the views of the entire parliament. Number two on my list of places to visit that are free in London is Tower Bridge. Now you can go up Tower Bridge and I think it costs about £10 to walk across the walkway which is actually I think glass in some points. I haven't actually done it myself but I love heading over to Tower Bridge to admire such an iconic bridge that is so world famous and is just an iconic place to visit in London. It is a grade 2 listed suspension bridge and was built over around 12 years from 1886. It is one of the most iconic bridges in London, so it's definitely worth a visit. Next up is Camden, an area of London just north of the main city of London, and it is one of my favourite places to visit in the city. It is an incredible place full of markets, independent shops, cafes, curiosities, and there's a big love of music and art and you can also walk down Regent's Canal which is how you can spend a lovely day. There's lots of places to grab lunch or grab a pint and it's just a really great place to explore. Next up you've got Changing of the Guard which is located at a couple of places across London but the most famous is at Buckingham Palace where the Queen lives. It is a striking display of pageantry and it's very British and something that you will definitely want to do if you are a tourist in London. Simply it is the new guards coming on to their shift and taking over from the old guards but they do it in such a old fashioned kind of eccentric way that it really does make for a really great showing. Next up one of the best tourist spots to hit up in London is Covent Garden. It's an area, a shopping district more or less but it's also located very close to Leicester Square so you've got a lot of theatres around. You've also got some really great restaurants and places to grab something to eat. It's also home to the craft stores of the Apple Market as well as the Piazza being home to some of the UK's best designer brands. It is a really great place to see some street performers performing as well and it's just a lovely area to spend an afternoon. And my final spot on my list of tourist spots in London is the Sky Garden. One of the most famous free public viewing platforms in the city and around the world, the Sky Garden offers incredible views, places to grab food, have a wander around their tropical garden and it's just a lovely place to go. You do have to book tickets in advance, even though they're free, they only allow a certain number of people in each slot up to the roof garden. So it's important that you book a really long way in advance. They release them, I think, on a monthly basis. So make sure you check and see if they've got some availability for your next time in London. Okay, so the next section of this list is parks. And London is one of the most famous cities in the world for its parks. And all of these come under kind of the royal parks which, um, emblem, which are looked after by the royal family. And the first park I'm going to be talking to you about is Hyde Park. 
Hyde Park is set right in the centre of London and it is one of the most famous parks in the entire world. It is located just at the end of Oxford Street near Marble Arch and it is an Im impressive park with lots going on. There is the Serpentine which is the famous lake and you can also go boating here you can also go wild swimming which i never knew you could do i think you have to pay a certain annual fee to be able to do that um but it is a stunning park with lots of things to do and in the summer it's also the park that holds a lot of the main city festivals high park is one of eight royal london parks and is a vast park at 350 acres so it's well worth a visit Next up on my list is literally next door to Hyde Park and it is Kensington Gardens. It's the gardens that are attached to Kensington Palace which is where uh, Catherine and William live and it is one of the most beautiful places to have a wander around. Uh, it is a stunning place of lots of nature, flowers and botanical exhibitions. You can also have a look at the Albert Memorial as well as the Diana Memorial Playground which is great for kids if you are coming as a family. These gardens are slightly smaller than Hyde Park at 264 acres but are still very much worth the visit and you could probably do both Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens in one afternoon and also take a trip to Kensington Palace. If you are heading over towards Buckingham Palace, which I'm sure you will, uh, it's well worth a stop at St James's Park. Located just outside Buckingham Palace, it is the Royal Gardens. It is located just alongside the Mall and Horse Guards Parade and is well worth a wander around with an ice cream in the summer. You can enjoy impressive views from St James's Cafe and you can also go and visit the resident pelicans, which is the most random thing I ever knew existed in London but it's well worth a visit. And finally on my list of the best free things to do in London under parks is Richmond Park. Now this is located a little bit further out of the city uh, so you will need to either cycle, get a bus, get the tube or you could walk but it would take a couple of hours. Richmond Park provides wide open spaces, grasslands and the best bit is there are so many deer in Richmond Park. At Richmond Park you can go cycling, have a little walk and even go to the Plantation Cafe and enjoy views all across London and you can even see St Paul's Cathedral from the Richmond Park. Okay so next up on my list of free things to do in London we have got markets and London is one of the best cities in the world for markets and I'm very proud to call London home because of this fact. There are some incredible places including Spitalfields, Brick Lane, Portobello Market, Columbia Road Flower Market and many more as well as the newly opened Italy which is an Italian style deli market located just near Liverpool Street. First up I'll talk briefly about Borough Market as it's one of the most iconic markets in London located just at, on the south end of the river near London Bridge and it is an incredible place if you love food. There are so many market stalls in there as well as incredible pop-up street food style um, cafes and restaurants which you can go and grab some food as well as buying a bit of cheese, a bit of meat, you can get mussels from a stand. It's just an incredible place to explore and if you're a foodie that is the place to be. Second is the Columbia Road Flower Market which if you've followed me for a while you will know I adore that market held every Sunday from around 8am I think in the morning to about 2pm. Uh, it is the best place to go in London for flowers. Um, every time me and Theo head there we always come back with an array of different pieces to go in the garden or in the house uh, or just some gypsophilia and some eucalyptus to pop in some vases to dot around the house. It is an incredible place to go, it is super busy every time I go so make sure you go earlier rather than later and along the side of Columbia Road Flower Market you will find an array of different cafes and shops which are also worth a visit. Uh, only on my kind of third, fourth, fifth visit did I start to go a little bit away from the main shopping street and I explored some incredible and found some incredible cafes and restaurants as well as a couple of vinyl shops and vintage stores. Next up is Portobello Market. 
in Notting Hill and I was here a couple of weeks ago with Sandy uh, and we just headed over there to grab some food and have a wander around as well as heading down to Paddington. Now the market is on every day from what I understand but Saturday is the best day to go when you've got most of the stalls that are open and it's a really busy thriving place to visit and a really great market as well. Brick Lane is next up on my list, located in Shoreditch, it is one of the best places for art, culture and food. It is home to one of the biggest Bangladeshi communities in London and is often called Bangla Town and this is, means that you can find some incredible curry houses around this area so it's well worth a visit if you love food as well as picking up some incredible vintage clothes. Is, Brick Lane is well known for its vintage shops so it's always the place I go if I want to pick up some vintage gems. And a rogue one to add to this list, even though it's not quite a market, it's definitely not outside, it is inside, it's called Italy. It only opened this summer and it has already been a very popular place to visit for many tourists and locals alike in London. It is an Italian deli market spread across three floors inside near Liverpool Street and just the fact that it's an entire market dedicated to Italian food meant that it had to be included on this list because I'm obsessed with everything Italian um, so make sure you add this one to your list of places to go in London. And next on my list is Spitalfields, a lively East End area which is well known for its big Bangladeshi community. Uh, it's also super close to Brick Lane which is another area I mentioned earlier in this video and if you head to the old Spitalfields market you'll find lots of crafts, fashions, restaurants, cafes and much much more and it's well worth the visit. Okay so next up on my list of three things to do in London is of course museums. So London is also one of the best places in the world to find free museums and they are of high standard and high quality as well. So we have the British Museum, we have the Natural History Museum, the v &A, the Science Museum amongst an array of others and they are all free. So I will just run very quickly through some of my favourites. So first up we've got the British Museum and it is the world's oldest museum and is home to over 80,000 artefacts. Second up is the Science Museum located in Kensington and is located over seven floors of interesting interactive exhibitions. You can see how cars work, locomotives, you can learn about space, the ocean and much, much more. Third one on my list is the National Gallery located in Trafalgar Square. It's home to over 2,300 pieces of art and is well worth a visit if you love your art and culture. Another one to add to the list is the British Library and it is an incredible place if you love literature. There are said to be over 200 million pieces of work, whether that is letters, books, magazines or newspapers. So it is well worth a visit if you are interested in that kind of thing and it's free. So on the end of this list with free, th free things to do in London, at the end of museums is the Natural History Museum. Also located in Kensington, it's home to some incredible pieces of work related to nature and wildlife. And the main thing you've got to see in this museum is the entrance to the museum. There is an enormous blue whale skeleton called Hope and that was installed only a couple of years ago to replace the dinosaur skeleton which was there for around 10 years previous. The next theme on my list is shopping and I will whiz through this one because even though it's not something that is super close to my heart I know that a lot of tourists come to London for the shopping. We have some incredible shopping districts all across the city and I would rate some of the best as Oxford Street simply because it has an array of shops all along the street. Uh, it spans about two kilometres I believe and there is all the high street designers but there are also a lot of tourist inspired shops as well and it is just a really great place to grab a couple of bargains. Another place is One New Change which has again a lot of the kind of high street and designer shops and is well worth a visit if you are over in the city of London. Next up is Carnaby Street, it's a pedestrianised area in London and it is a really great place, a little bit alternative and there's some more independent style shops there if you want to get away from the high street style shops um, and the fourth one on my list will be Neil's Yard as well. 
Neil's Yard is an independent, colourful courtyard where you can find lots of independent shops, cafes and bars. So I'm back after a quick uh, battery change because I've been speaking for so long on here that my battery decided I could see it flashing in the top hand corner. So I've just done a quick swap and we are back to our list of free things to do in London. And the next theme we are talking about is historical monuments. First up we have got Westminster Abbey, which is a Gothic cathedral located in Westminster, just behind the Palace of Westminster, where you will find the UK government and parliament. It is one of the UK's most notable religious buildings because of the amount of royalty that has got married in there and the amount of previous kings and queens of the UK are buried in Westminster Abbey. Next up on our list is the Tower of London, which is an incredible fortress and castle within, which is officially Her Majesty's Royal Palace. Founded in 1066, part of the Norman Conquest, the castle has been in the royal family ever since and it is a stunning place to go and learn more about London and the UK's historical background. The tower is actually an array of separate buildings which are surrounded by a fortress and there is also a moat so it's well worth a little visit if you are visiting as a family as you kind of learn lots about the history of the Tower of London and London itself. Next up on my list is St Paul's Cathedral and another iconic religious monument in London. It sits on Ludgate Hill at the highest point in the city of London and is a stunning exhibition of architecture in London. The dome on top is just incredible and although you do have to pay to go inside, it is well worth even just admiring it from the outside and having a wander around its entirety. And to round off this list of 30 free things to do in London, could not forget about a few of London's most popular pop culture references including nine and three quarters platform at King's Cross Station. Now if you are a Harry Potter fan you will know all about this already but located just around the corner from the main terminal at King's Cross Station not in St Pancras on the other side of the road you will find the platform nine and three quarters photo opportunity. Now there's not much here but it is a very popular spot and for those Harry Potter fans it is well worth a visit. I'm ending this list with one of my favourite band references ever and it is the Abbey Road Crossing uh, or more appropriately known as the Abbey Road Studios where the Beatles recorded most of their music uh, and located just outside the studios there is the famous Abbey Road Crossing which is more or less only a zebra crossing but it was of course as you probably well know was made famous by their album Abbey Road. And fun fact to end this video is that the Abbey Road crossing I mentioned a second ago is actually not in its original location from when the Beatles shot their music video here in 1969. It's actually been moved by three meters. So there's a fun fact for you to end this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you a complete guide of free things to do in London. I know that travel is starting to resume now and you guys are going to be travelling from all over the world to this incredible city so I had to share some of my favourite places that I've visited over the last couple of months. Uh, so yeah if you love this video please give it a thumbs up, every thumbs up and like really helps me, drop me some comments and questions below and if you are new here I would love a subscribe, every little helps in helping me grow this channel. So thank you very much and I hope to see you soon. I upload a video every Friday so come back again next week.